So today we're going to talk about binary representative ionic compounds. I know that this is a big long thing so we need to go ahead and decode what this means. First up is going to be binary. Just like you already know, bi is going to mean two. So binary ionic compounds are going to be ionic compounds that have two different elements coming together to make one single compound. That representative of the binary ionic, uh, binary representative ionic compounds, that title representative means that they are going to come from the first two columns, okay? They are representative because their column number is representative of how many valence electrons they have and is also representative of how many valence electrons they are willing to give away. Other metals do not act like this, so we have um, representative metals here that are going to act exactly how we think that they are. So my binary representative ionic compounds, I'm always going to list my cation first. You'll notice when I wrote the word binary, I have my B in blue. That is the same color that I am using for my cation. And my cation comes first, just like it did in binary. My cations are my good guys. They're the ones who are giving away those electrons, giving a gift. That is such a nice thing to do. So they are going to be written first. Good guys, in the case of ionics, are going to come first, not last. My uh, actual formula is going to look something similar to this. So this is a formula. I have M sub A and sub B. And that M is going to be the metallic element. Now remember that my cations are going to be my metals. And then I have my N, which is my non-metallic element. And uh, my non-metals are going to be my anion. So my anion is being represented by this uh, kind of pinkish color. And my cation is being represented by this blue color. Now I did say sub A and sub B. Those are both subscripts. In an actual formula, they will not be letters. These are just placeholders. They will be actual numbers, uh, two, four, six, etc. And those are going to be my actual counts for how many of that particular element I have to have to end up with a net charge of zero so that I have an account for all of those electrons and where they go. Now, how I actually get this uh, formula I am going to find the charge of the metallic element and my non-metallic element, and I will crisscross my charges to form subscripts. This is a shortcut cheat way to find the lowest common multiple, which is what you were actually looking for, but so that it is a little bit faster, a little bit more direct, we are going to go ahead and cheat and use a crisscross for charges um, method. So here I have my cation and I have my anion. My cation has a charge of plus two and my anion is going to have a charge of negative three. Now you'll notice whenever I wrote these charges, I actually had the plus and the minus after the number. This is purely an aesthetic choice. You can have the plus in front of the actual number or the negative in front of the actual number. It doesn't actually matter in particular. It's just an aesthetic thing, and most chemists prefer to have the actual denotation of charge, positive or negative, after the actual numeral for the charge. So I have my metal and my nonmetal and their respective charges, and then I am going to drop them into subscript form. So I'm taking them from, su uh, from superscripts, which is the floating charge number, and I'm turning them into subscripts, which is my uh, denotation of how many I'm actually going to have. So I have the three from uh, my non-metallic anion here, and that is going to become the subscript for my metallic cation here. And my two is going to become the subscript for my uh, anion here. So what this ends up looking like Again, I dropped charges because now these are pure counts. So I cannot have a negative number of a particular atom. I can also 
I don't need to have a positive here because it's implied. Normally you don't have to write the plus if you're talking about a positive number, it's implied. The only time that you need it is in the charges because otherwise we're not sure if you just left off the negative or if it's actually supposed to be positive. Since we're not sure, we have to make sure that we actually write it here, but not here. So you'll notice here that I went ahead and I dropped those numbers. I kept the color coding so that you can see where they came from. And this allows me to find the lowest common multiple very, very quickly. So the lowest common multiple between two and three is going to be six. So if I multiply positive two by three, I get a charge of positive six. If I multiply negative three by two, I get negative six. Well, positive six plus negative six is gonna be zero. My net charge is zero, so this is my correct formula. We're gonna actually look at a real compound here that we could have. We have Ba for barium and we have Cl for chlorine. Now you might be wondering where I got these charges from. Remember that my binary representative ionics are going to be in my first two columns. So I can go ahead and I can find barium. I see that barium is element number 56. It is in column 2A. That means it has two valence electrons. Two is really far away from eight. So it is going to give away two electrons rather than steal six. Giving a gift is a nice thing to do, so barium is going to have a positive two charge because it gave two valence electrons away. Now chlorine is in column 7A. That means it has seven valence electrons. It has seven at once eight, so it is going to go ahead and steal one rather than give away seven. And stealing is bad, so it is going to have a negative one charge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to switch those charges for subscripts and you will notice something strange. Whenever I switch charges for subscripts, I gave barium's two to chlorine and I gave chlorine's one to barium, but I didn't actually write that one. And the reason I did not write that one is because I don't write ones. One is implied. I would not have written barium at all if I did not have any bariums. So I have an implied count of one for barium, so I'm not going to write that subscript. So that is going to be how we're going to write formulas and how we're going to balance charges. Now we're going to look at how we're going to find the name of the actual compound. So for the nomenclature, nomenclature just means it looks kind of like names. So this is going to be how we're going to name the naming tradition of these elements, of these compounds, I mean. And for our binary representative ionic compounds, uh, for my nomenclature, my cations, my good guys, are going to keep their name. They're proud of themselves. They were really nice and kind, and they gave away electrons to those elements in need. And so they keep their name. They're proud of themselves. They don't care if you know who they are. So they're going to be loud and proud about keeping their name. My anions, on the other hand, those are my bad guys. They're the ones who stole from those poor innocent metals. And since they are thieves, they are going to try to hide their original identity and see if uh, they can kind of form what I like to call a street name. Um, and this is not going to be particularly creative. Anions are not particularly creative whenever they were coming up with their bad guy name. So all they do is they're going to change their suffix to I-D-E, I'd, okay? And how they actually figure out where that I'd is going to go is generally going to be wherever it sounds the best. Now, I know that that doesn't make a whole lot of sense initially. If you say it out loud, generally where you're going to hear the I-D-E ending sounds the best, that's generally going to be the actual place where the anion changes their name to. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So we have the exact same compound that we just found the formula for. So we have Ba and Cl. So we need to find out who Ba is. Ba is going to be barium. It is first and it is a metal, which makes it the cation. So I'm going to go ahead and keep barium's name and it's just going to be straight barium. And then I need to figure out chlorine, which is CL. I need to figure out chlorine's street name. So that means I need to figure out where that ide is going to end up being. And I think that 
chlorine is going to turn into chloride. And that is going to be the actual compound name, barium chloride.